<laughs> Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Michigan Bros Grow Show. It's episode 238, and happy Easter. We're doing a little, uh, little Easter special tonight. Cheers. How's everybody doing? Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Cheers back there. Hippity hoppity, hippity hoppity. Hippity hoppity. It's dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hashtags are on the way. Hashtag. Oh, the Hash time's on the way. There we go. Hippity hoppity, y'all. Uh, if you're feeling festive, put uh, some smoke clouds in chat. Cheers, everybody. Or some bunny ears. Or bunny. There you go. Some bunnies in chat. I had some nice tie-dye bunny ears that Mama Red uh, shared with us, gave us for Easter for, well, of course, Ruben. But, you know, I would prefer to wear them. And he destroyed, Ruben decided yeah. to have them for his. Yeah, Ruben. Uh, so. He deserves it. You put them on him. I put them on him, and then it kept him busy. So I was happy to let it keep him busy. So he was a good boy with them. Glasses. Nice glasses too. Look yes, at that. Thank you. It's not gonna last long, but it's not how it works. They're just like They're ears are just kind of like popping out. <laughs> <laughs> extra extra <laughs> visor action right there. yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's it, really that's awful visor for the beard that's the visor for the dad you don't want to get extra sunshine and burn out them terps man you got it i see chat we got blue kiss anything grows pedro's grow room cheers everybody sheldon oh Purple, yeah spartan's Jam. not feeling great so spartan's just us feeling great just get us and of course we did a time change for you all as well um Came in at 10, so I appreciate everybody also kind of what being patient, waiting around. Uh, yeah. hopefully, we're doing something. We hopped in late, like dams. Yeah, there you go. I'm not sure, I like that. We hopped in late, guys. We uh, hopped yeah, you better, Cincinnati, so we was a little late. You better make puns all night long now. Hop, hip, hip, hoppity. I gotta, uh, we didn't discuss uh, the time change, um, too much, but. I don't mind this time change. Do you guys like this time change? I don't care. Don't matter to me. Yeah. Easy. It'd be better to let our people know if we want to do this time change really. But I guess we got to talk to Spartan. So yeah. we'll, we'll talk to Spartan. Guys, uh, tentatively, we're going to be at uh, 9 p.m. next week. But um, in, in case we go to 10 p.m., you know, we'll see what happens. It tends to be a better schedule for us in the summertime just because of how late it stays oh, yeah. and, late and stuff yeah. like that. Light until 9 30, practically yeah, yeah. 10 o'clock um, for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I enjoy those uh later hours in the summertime specifically. But anyways, back on to the show. Cash is rolling along. We are uh, spoken of Project V from Old Man Hermit Hash. I had dinner with him Tuesday and he shared some doobies with me and this one is uh, one that I saved because uh, he said that the, you just keep getting higher and higher and higher with it. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. No ceiling. I like yeah. those ones. Higher and higher, baby. We've been listening to a bunch of ELO lately. Okay. Shout out to Becca's stepdad because he got us ELO tickets. So we're going to see Jeff Lynn and his electric light orchestra. Nice. If anybody's a traveling Wilburys fan, you know. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Lynn and ELO. It's going to be fucking fun, man. Yeah. It's not until October. Not until October. Oh, what a wait. Hi, guys. Something to look forward to for the fall? Yeah, we're yeah. taking my little brother for his first concert. Oh, fun. First concert, dude. <coughs> yeah, little, little brother was out there winning some treats at the egg egg hunt and throwing axes. As soon as I got to Easter, Easter brunch, he was pulling me out to throw, throw axes, fake axes, classic axes in a toy. It was really fun. Actually, you said you were the best. Yeah, he did. I was the best. I was the only one to hit a bullseye out of all the other, you know, adults there. For all the children at heart. For all the children at heart. You well, did it. did have a festive day. Uh, it, if you celebrate Easter, if you don't, celebrate spring. Happy spring to everybody. Uh, if you're pagan, happy uh, Astre, Astre, what do you call it? And uh, all that fun stuff, right? So cheers. There's lots to celebrate. Yeah. Heck yeah. We we celebrated yesterday at the Fledge, which was a lot of fun. Oh, I see Chuck D's Nugs in there. Shout out Chuck D's Nugs. Big Jar, if you're listening, those guys showed up. And as always, supporting the cause. And they're always great, great friends to come up there and hang out. Um, yeah, Red Eye, shout out to Red Eye, came up there as well. 
And uh, three, two, one hooked me up with a big old cap junkie doobie. So I got to go nice. back to my pocket and uh, I'll fire that one up on the show tonight. So shout out to uh, tonight's show, uh, My High Tonight, will be brought to you by <laughs> 321 Genetics. Shout out to him. And uh, Organitron, because he hooked it up with, uh, yeah, we got a little dad. He left a little, little dad. Very nice. That's awesome. Good people about that. Yeah. All, all great people, man. Great people out there at the Third Eye Craft Fair. Of course, community, building community. Uh, give your support. You got free, or you have uh, extra, extra clothing, food, camp. <laughs> Specifically taking canned food right now, uh, most importantly, and uh, give it on up to them if you're in the Lansing area and you can, uh, you have a little extra something to donate to the community in that area. So it's really cool. Have a lot of smoke. And my nephew showed up. So shout out to my nephew. I don't know if my nephew watches the show, but in case he catches on, uh, he showed up and hung out. His, his buddy, buddy came up with him. And shout out to him. You know who you are. But since I'm not going to say your name, I guess I could tell the story. He uh, he did the old green out, you know, and oh, you know, poor dude, man. He he uh, he did fall back and, and kind of went went white. And, oh, oh shit! Wait, did he actually go down? Yeah, he did. Oh, damn. And you know what? If you are listening, every single person in that place has probably happened. To yeah. It, it happens to the best of us. It happens to everybody, and it happens to those of us that are most experienced in smoking. Yeah. It's not really a tolerance thing. It happens to you know. It's it's a it's a set and setting thing. Most importantly, it, it has to do with you know. A lot of it is the consumption <coughs> of cannabis, and you also get into the realm of again set and setting. You know what is it? It's just whatever happens with your uh, it, with your veins. My uh, the, what, what's the name of the uh, a phlebotomist? Yeah, the phlebotomist that took, took my lab screen last was telling me about it. it's a very specific thing in your something rhythm, your vascular rhythm or something like that. Uh, goes out of goes out of check and it just happens, you know. It happened to me the week before. So I like was like, I understand you're okay. Yeah. But it's scary. Well, I get a little dizzy. It's, it's scary to see someone go down. Yeah. And especially if it's not happened to you before. So Another yeah, right are, protocol. They're yeah. young. Yeah. I instantly gave him a little bit of CBD oil. I have some CBD oil up there with us at all times. It's, it's, it's there on our table. And uh, a big old drop of it for him. And yeah, he, he walked off. No problem. You know, he sat down for a minute, sat there. Yeah, see? Yeah, Pedro knows. Pedro, Pedro's over there. Pedro's in the thousand, thousand uh, milligram. We'll call him in the gram, gram plus club. And uh, yeah, you know, you get those levels. You get there. And, and I mean, it happens to me too. The citric, and I like smoking citric, the really hazy, uh, lime, uh, or terpenoline heavy strains. It gets me like that, definitely in the set and setting. I get a little dizzy. I'll have to sit down. I, I feel that way often at the fledge, actually, but I'll, I'll sit back. I'm sitting down usually because I got a little, a little head rush, you know. It's definitely a, it, and a lot of it is sugar as well, you know. Certain strains can. As, can uh, uh, fluctuate your blood sugar in different times. There's Ruben here to talk about cannabis. A little stinker snacked off with a bag the other day. It's kind of funny. Got a photo of him before he tore it apart. Got it. Got it. I, I mean, he didn't turn it. I got a photo of him. Ruben! He's sitting down now. Oh, he's on my totally, chair. totally took like, his chair over. Good boy. It kind of like rings the bell when that happens. I got a buddy of mine that likes to say ding, 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 or whatever. And then yeah. he's actually fell back one time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. did he. Fortunately, he like did this roll. Hope yeah. your buddy didn't hit his head. That's no, really, luckily, yeah. That's the worst part. Yeah. Luckily, for sure. Yeah. It happens. We all get there every now and then, overthink a situation. But yeah, um, so to get off that conversation, so it's not happening to anybody right now who's taking dabs with us, you know what I mean? <laughs> Give us a bing ding. Or, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> welcome back from your nap. If uh, you're just <laughs> getting back from your nap, hit a little bell. Uh, for us. Uh, Jesus, take the wheel. So take the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We have. Uh, we we have been on a like a three week cycle uh, between a two and a three week cycle now. So rather than doing a one month full room, room we're doing like a, a eighteen day half a room cycle, I'm trying to 
uh, manage, you know, try to manage fewer crops, still get the same type of yield and stuff like that. And it actually put ourselves on a better, on a better cycle. Uh, because when we have a room shut down, it seems like we have a tendency of letting it, letting it sit idle for a bit too long while we try to get other things accomplished, you know? And um, I feel that. Yeah, yeah. You know, any of us that. And, and one of the other issues is, is you know, distance. You know, we, we do commute back and forth from from our, our indoor. Um, yeah, from our indoor. So we just have a tendency to have to, you know, have obligations at, at both locations so and a lot of that is you know it's it's a commercial building so there's no like shower so we have to install one of those so when you're doing things like cutting grass and doing general cleanup you know you have to manage you know grow room stuff independently of that kind of stuff what about one of them little outdoor showers right before we're, you go inside yeah so so we're actually planning on doing an, an indoor shower i'm gonna i'm gonna plumb something up this year for the last couple of years just haven't been in the cards this year i'm gonna try to do that try to get a little extra time you know thankfully becca and i got married last year but i i, I built a greenhouse and did some other some other yeah, prior i prioritized my life a little bit differently last year so I, I i stuck it out for another year without a shower out there but yeah that's definitely and i want an outdoor shower man you're absolutely right because you get the nature back there you get the birds spying on you <laughs> i agree maybe a squirrel check these nuts yeah real quick speaking of uh chuck and uh big jar they i think they both asked me what i was gonna have at the third eye craft fair this weekend and i'm like sirs i will not be there you're gonna have to hit up red and whoever else is there um i kind of took it off and have been prepping for the hash bash cup the next event coming up for me uh this weekend so make sure you find us there probably find a quite a few of us there um but yeah man it's i i feel that comment about like kind of letting things go a little bit too long when you get kind of like sidetracked with all of the things that are involved in this whole process especially when you're single source you're not just like you know processing material you know taking a material processing it you know getting rid of the what you don't need and you know packaging up what you do and just doing that day in day out kind of thing it's it's like right. uh you know you might be trimming one day and then not trim again for six weeks you might be transplanting one day and not transplant again for six weeks or you might have six days worth of transplanting to do you know yeah. um, you might have just harvested and you've got such a full stock that you're ready to go and flip the room immediately but you might want to clean it and so then you go clean it and then all of a sudden you get sidetracked with you know now you got to trim that harvest because it's ready and now you're two weeks in you still haven't put any plants in there your, your bedroom's overgrown right. you gotta start cutting things back you look in there in the lights Mom's yeah yeah you start gonna, you gotta cut things back they're getting root bound like you're uh, you just go through like you're busy and you're just like dude i got somewhere to be in 20 minutes but my moms are about to fry because they're in the lights <laughs> going there like with a pair of hedge clippers and it's right. just, just straight across the canopy like just don't even do it I had to do it sometimes they like you, just, so fast. you gotta get out of there and go do something else you're in the time crunch and you they have to be chopped you know mm -hmm yeah so fast yeah i mean it just happens sometimes that's where i'm at with it right now you know what i mean i just harvested like three three tables basically worth of plants and it's like i haven't really i haven't really replaced those plants yet you know and my veg is ready to be put into flower and it's like they're kind of different stages and i've got clones that need to be transplanted but now it's like all this processing has to be done and i got an event to prepare for and it's just like oh lord have mercy <laughs> i'll wait to give you some stuff then how about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll see you like next week fortunately there's always somebody to help tara, tara loves to help we love to help. Right. there's always hands on deck here here and there but um a lot of times you know it's difficult with uh with trying to bring people on board and still remaining single source for one, but another, you know, just general trust. I know that it's always iffy here and there in the industry. You really have to vet people. A lot of times it's people you really got to know. And sometimes, you know, even that relationships can go sour, you know, and unfortunately with the medical thing, with the medical thing, you know, as a caregiver, you're not really allowed anybody else in your grow. But fortunately we have the 21 and older, you know, people can hold weed nowadays, you know what I mean? But, they're really not supposed to be in your grow room. So if you ever have 
an employee that let's say you have to get rid of and they don't like you and they want to squeal at the CRA that well, you're doing whatever stupid shit, you know what I mean? And, um, uh, so, so, so you can bring people on, but again, you know, is that you said the word single source. Some people, you know, say that if you're not the person handling, you know, the, tr the, the product, you know, throughout the its cycle. And some, some people even say, you know, labeling your jars and doing all that, being your marketer and, and all of that, like is single source. And, 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 and to be honest, um, the commodity side of cannabis, you know, just, just, you know, you, you run, treating cannabis as a number and, and running cannabis numbers, like that's one thing, right? Um, and it's easy to say, well, you have a, you have a cost and your cost could be really high, or you could bring somebody on and you could have more time to do other things and make more money in other ways. And, and that's all in that, in that possibility. But then do, will your cannabis then lose value is my question. And I'm curious if, if, if then you're, pro, you're, you're no longer single source. So you no longer have that marketing and i th i think that that is a marketing advantage at some point and and i and i think that part of the reason that every every that the that the industry is so like this is because there's very little single source um, yes but the i, I think uh you're right in that it's a, a legal, marketing there's very single source in the legal industry so there so it's like oh yeah well yeah it's that's micro businesses only that's literally only micro businesses right. you know what i mean right. or completely vertically integrated businesses that are also doing non-single source you know what i mean they, they might be doing all, everything in-house on the same property but uh you know we asked this question a few times lately and we asked Smokey's uh solventless on friday kind of his perspective on it and he you know he's similar to pretty much everyone here um you know he's, he's got a, you know, a wife that might be hands-on he might get a little help here and there but it, you know he's a small enough scale where he can really pretty much manage it himself and he still considers him single source and i feel the same way about it i feel the same way about you know red setter farm even though becca's in there helping and you know, I, I still consider that single we're, source. We're, we're a single tax ID. So, yeah. Right. I, and, I, and there's certainly like a legal definition of being bound as one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Her and I filed a joint income this year. So, we, we are officially uh, <laughs> a collaborative single source operation. I like that shirt. That's pretty good, Becca. Dude, shout out to Mama and Daddy Red. Yeah, I see Daddy Red in chat. Daddy Red, happy Easter. Easter Mama Red, Red. listening. But I, I was wanting chicken butts, but I, chicken faces are okay too. I wasn't wanting anything. I was thinking that chicken butts would be. Would have been. I will say though that the uh, the only um, the only material that hasn't been harvested for the hash bash cup yet. Well, let's roll through it. We've got. Plenty of lime skunk. We've got some cobra milk. We've got go, uh, garlic punch. We've got some clementine. We've got a little bit of grape fun dip. And that's all going to be extracts. We've got, and possibly combinations within. We've got lime skunk, clementine, cobra milk, and garlic punch flour. Um, of course, the top goals. But I still have to harvest, freeze, and process the raspberry parfait. And I'm excited about that one. Um, and now that we're kind of at the finish line, I'm realizing that there are probably pretty fairly distinctly at this point three different phenos among the five plants. And it's funny because the way I lined them up are, you know, grouped together. So part of me is like, well, is this like an environmental like, you know, thing in the room, like something like that? But now it's the two short squatty ones, one that greened out much quicker than the other. Um, two pretty solid, bulky looking ones, which remind me of a different version of like lime skunk. How we had the two fetos of lime skunk, and one was like bulky, the other one was not. You know, it just kind of reminded me of that. Uh, it's like kind of beefed up, decently frosty, but like, uh, you know, I don't know. It, it seems like overall probably the winner, except for this one in the middle. Uh, it's just so dark purple, and it's so frosty, and it's like the fan leaves have that, the you know, the trichomes running down the stems and uh, up the up the fan leaves, and 
the I don't know. It's it's nice, but it's not it's not the big producer. You know what I mean? So ultimately, it's going to come down to kind of the terpene test of, you know, what the oil looks like and whatnot. Because I am going to process, I think, all of it, and I do have clones of all of them, but I know at least two of them are immediately getting chucked because I hate those short, squatty, hard to harvest plants. I'll be honest. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I want to get rid of Citrique because of that, but it's Citrique. Oh, no, you can't get rid of Citrique. I know, that's what I mean. Dance, it's big nuts. It's it's like, dude, it's a nice plant, but it's the shortest one in there. It's, it's like me standing next to, like, you and Big and Spark and all those. It's like, okay, fucking hey, dude. I'm just like, all right, guys, you know, down here chilling. <laughs> I'm the Indica, I guess. <laughs> Do you process them all separately? Or will you process them together? So it's going to depend entirely on the volume of them. Like if they get, you know, I'm typically my average run, I would say is around 1600 grams of fresh frozen. Um, I'll, I'll go as low as like 1200, but I really try not to, I try to stick to, you know, kind of to a more or less full column. Um, and I can like pack a little bit extra in there. I've gotten as much as like over 2300 grams before. I don't know how. Maybe I misweighed something because it seems like I can't get anywhere close to that nowadays. Um, but maybe that was like a trim thing. No, I'm pretty sure that's fresh frozen. I don't know. It was a long time ago. And in any case, um, I think that there's a potential for the two. There's two of them that are kind of that second one I talked about. Not the short, squatty one, not the purple one, the more voluminous one that kind of reminded me of that lime skunk, you know. Um, that one between those two plants, I probably could do on its own. I think the purple one definitely is not enough on its own, and the other two probably are not enough, enough on their own. So I might have to run those three together. But I, you know, probably get a couple batches at least. I might be underestimating it. I've only like defoliated them, um, but I think that's probably realistic. I'll do like a, a two together and then three together. Well, so you'll get an idea of what, what's going to do better. Yeah, and, you know, if nothing, uh, I'll be knuckle deep in the terpenes, you know what I mean, and breaking them up and harvesting them and kind of figuring out, what you know, mm -hmm. which ones got it and which ones don't. You know what I mean? It's certainly, like, one to, like, look at it as a grower's perspective. It's another thing to look at it from, like, a ease of harvest and, and, and bag appeal perspective, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. Um, once I've gone through the entire process once, it's pretty easy to kind of figure that out, but you can kind of take clues along the way to uh, going back all the way to, you know, the early stem rubs and stuff like that, which I will say it's like that. Is it that I'm going to pull up a picture of it. It's like this. Um, it's not Halls. Is it Lifesavers? Like a strawberry looks like. Oh. Do you ever get fruity smells on stem rubs? Yeah, this is what this is straight creamy, fruity, like very soft fruit. Of like a vegging stem rub, or is this in flower? Nah, more more like week two flower. Oh. Yeah, like pushing yeah. in the actual flower production. Because like the the main stem rubs, I'll get like in veg early, you know, early on. Um, I, I get I, when I when I know it's going to be really good. It's usually like a really skunky. It's usually skunky, like like the. It, it won't smell skunky in flower. You know what I mean. Sometimes it's a little hazy or something. It's usually a little bit more of a, of a uh, like a sativa or something that ends up being like that. But it's like it's just funky in veg. Hmm. But but I don't get the fruits. Like I, I've never gotten like a like a strawberry or like a grape smelling anything in like, you know like. Before I put it in the flower, you should. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know if like in the bedroom. I'm trying to think of garlic punch. Does that man? It's it's one of those ones where it's like I even harvesting it and processing it. It's like uh, guys, it's mind blowing. I want to share that now. I've got gonna have too many tabs open. <laughs> uh, let's see that real quick. Now that we're talking about garlic punch, I think it's this one. Is it the one? Yeah. So the one from today. Happy Easter. There's some garlic punch. Guys, this one was like, it's just so berry. It's so incredible, the smell of garlic punch, because it just, I don't know why, for some reason in my mind, it makes me think of GMO for so, like, just so heavily, but it's it's just so, so much berry in there. <laughs> yeah. I can't well, wait to share that. I only one, grew but. it out once, and it, it just didn't 
I was looking for the garlic turps, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. It more berry. So obviously you're getting the berry too, but um, I still got some of them. I might, you know, have to re look at that one again, but I've got so many other ones too that I should probably try first before I go back to ones I've already done in before. <laughs> You know, probably. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. That's, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm gonna real quickly. It reminds me of, like these type of <laughs> halls. They're breezers, I guess. It's like the the like strawberry and cream, creamy strawberry flavor. I guess I've there's never no even method. seen those before. No, I don't. No. I don't know if there's other flavors, but it's huh. it's very like that's what it makes me think of. Is this like so Cobra Milk has this like creamy flavor to it right and that's kind of cool but it's definitely like the pretty pebbles tricks whatever else is in there like totally throws it in a different direction as well you know it's just that cereal i guess but this one is not the cereal milk cream this is like a like a cool whip cream you know i don't know something like it's just so light and fluffy like a marshmallowy you know whipped cream cool whip <laughs> Wheel of Wheaton. I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> the, the hippie crasher has a little creamy, creamy side to it. In 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 flower when it's fresh, it's like kind of fruity. It's kind of kind of smells like pineapple. It's a little a little uh, maybe even you know a little sour fruit. Um, but once it dries out, it really gets like almost like like cream. Yeah, like like whipped cream. <laughs> we uh. We need to grow enough of that to process some. I would love to. Pro I mean, there's not really one in your garden I wouldn't want to, but I'd love to. Um, so, like outdoor, it's insanely big, but indoor, it's like, oh, we got a couple bigger ones. It has this huge, so, we'll see. But, huge fan leaves. They're like the biggest fan leaves in the whole garden, like the size of our face. They're on like this small out plants. Outdoor, they were like oh, made for outdoor. Yeah. Of plants, dude. Yeah. It's, it's got the pineapple. But then the, the cream definitely comes as the biggest. I want to put a couple of those on some 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 good terroir outside with a nice a nice poly cover and like might be a room. That'd be nice. Got some yeah, a couple larger ones too. So it might hurt. All before, I mean, they've been really well produced. They're super dense and nice. I mean, they, they just they don't they don't double up in size and flower or anything. They they don't really even go fifty percent. They might go ten percent flower. I mean, it's barely grow. So you really got to bend it out and bend super slow. So it's one of those things. It's really good weed. I'm not sure they just get huge. I don't, they, I don't think they. I don't. It, I don't think it doubled in size out there. It, it did a little bit better than ten percent out. There in our garden our huge one in our wedding photo was that and it got yeah bigger. yeah that was hippie crasher if you check her we got a wedding photo on our instagram by the end of it you know all the branches were just bigger than us. <laughs> and this was in august so it was just barely starting to flower i mean i've been around out some outside plants but i've never been around an outside plant that i had never either honestly tara i was like oh this is fucking awesome. so <laughs> and, uh, tomatoes buy it all the <laughs> It and a dahlia and a squash. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like I've seen people like Mendo Dope. They grow some big fucking. Oh yeah. It wasn't even anywhere near like a. It was like a small Mendo Dope. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they get like twelve foot A frame ladders just to trim around. They're like hey. <laughs> very happy having that. So that's like a picture. Solid 11, 11 feet. I think well, some was like over were, ten feet. It was over ten feet. Yeah, I mean the nice. green, the greenhouse is eight. Plus a, a little bit on the thing, and it was stretching over the greenhouse. I mean, it's got like the greenhouse is like that high up off the elevation, plus another, you know, eight, eight, nine feet. So, yeah, it goes up there. That's why you got all the mammoth sunflowers everywhere. <laughs> yeah, hide that sucker. I can't yeah. wait to plant those. I know a lot of people that uh, plant corn, you know, a couple rows of corn next to the greenhouse. Next yeah, to the you have like this yeah, fence corn. of corn and then yeah, yeah, yeah. it's little yeah, yeah. popping out in the middle. <laughs> I actually, I'm not going to do it, but I, I can think of an exact house that you could scroll down on Google Maps and see just that. You look in their backyard and you're like, oh, look at they're growing corn. You're like, hold on, zoom in. Enhance. Zoom in. Enhance. 
And that, oh, that's a weird. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Google Maps just updated our area. And it's got our whole like garden plotted out. I'm like, oh, cool, Chicken man. It's, yeah, Chicken Coop. You can see the coop. You can see the fucking all of our pathways and shit throughout. I don't know if you can see any weed. You can't get that close. It's all green. <laughs> Grow green. They won't be able to spot anything. I, they used to tell me that they could spot it with thermal imagery, specifically cannabis. Like, what if it's in the middle of uh, just a polyculture, a whole bunch of different kinds of plants? I think it's not necessarily thermal, but the um, the some sort of UV imagery where they can pick up like the trichomes because they have it's something to do with the trichomes. I think. What if you have tomatoes that also have trichomes, like? Yeah. I don't think it's like the. I think it's more about the amount of trichomes, probably oh, that's yeah. that's able to pick it up. You know, it was some laser ray. I don't know some sort of light. Yeah. You know, something that we can't see with the naked eye, probably. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, but that always that always baffled me on how they were able to like, they, like I could understand if you're growing like mono cropping, right? You know, you're mono cropping in like a dirt field, and you could pick up. You could definitely pick it up on thermal. Well. The uh, I was looking at these <laughs> recently. <laughs> I think they're going to release the fourth version of this this year. Well, no, this um, this is the first version of the Mavic drone, right? Oh. The Mavic DJI. I think I've showed it on the show before. This is the just version one. They're on version three right now. Uh, like I said, I think version four will probably come out this year because I think version three came out in twenty twenty one. They come out with some updates and you know other options along the way pro models enterprise models whatnot there's a, i think it's called 3dt or something like that um that might be the matrix but there's essentially a consumer level uh drone for you know we'll talk we'll say three thousand dollars that has a thermal lens on it <laughs> that you could just roll around your neighborhood you know what i mean like and this is obviously makes it very accessible to your local you know police forces and whatnot as well uh, but they usually go for like the kind of twenty thousand dollar actual enterprise type dro type drones, which yeah, it's not just like one lens. These things have like three, four, or five lenses on them. One of them will be thermal. One will be night vision. One will be telephoto zoom. One will just be like fish eye, whatever you know. It's wild. Scary. <laughs> yeah, it's really scary. <laughs> I would say uh, some sort of a radiant heat barrier, right? Uh, radiant heat barriers, you typically see them in a hardware store. It looks like a big roll of uh, a silver bubble wrap, right? Or, uh, you know, a big giant roll of bubble wrap that you'd cover your pool. It looks like a big mat of that, but it's silver and reflective. They also have a, like Tyvek makes a, uh, a foam foam uh, insulation with a a uh, infrared or UV protectant um, barrier on one side. And that stuff, aside from, you know, infrared, right? Aside from uh, being able to, like, see heat, heat signature and stuff like that, it'll prevent heat signature from creeping into your grow room. So if you're in a steel building or if you're just in a – honestly, just a, a two-by-four structure with drywall and, and a normal house, I mean – the, you you might have great R value of insulation to keep your your house cool, but the radiant heat that comes from the sun, like the microwaves and stuff like that, it actually gets passed and goes through your house and can heat up your home. So having having just those in your home is an excellent uh, barrier of insulation just to protect from those additional rays of the sun from getting past your R value that you have in your home and getting into your home and heating up your Home or grow space, you know what I mean. Specifically, we have the the bubble wrap stuff on all the all of our exterior walls before we have our, our grow rooms built inside there, and then we don't have it on our on our ceilings. But I mean, if I was in a red state, I'd probably have it in, on my ceilings, you know, uh, definitely. Or if I had more lights going or something like that. But what uh, what? So they can pick up heat signature, obviously, but what? It like thermal, what is that? Is that that's just picking up temperature, right? What is it? It's not picking up light or anything like that. So temperature, temperature. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the, the, the 
barrier will protect from from temperature and thermal exchange. I'm wondering how well like a you know four inch thick sprayed foam insulation would work. You know what I mean? Like, do you need uh that I don't know. I'm not sure there. I'm not sure if, if it's an R value thing, if it's just right. Yeah. Uh I don't know what the R stands for, but it's like it's the insulation value. It's the value of like of how how dense your insulation is to uh, I, I think there's an oxygen versus it's a measure of an insulation ins, insulation sample's ability to reduce the rate of heat flow under specified test condition. Um, doesn't say what it actually stands for, though. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, the higher the number, the maybe it's a, like a formula. It's a formula, yeah. Delta T over pi. Sub Q, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> the, the number is going to usually, what is it? It's going to put you into a larger, a, a larger uh, area. I think of insulation. So like, like a pad, a pad like three inches thick is only going to have a certain R value. So if you want an R value higher, the pad's going to be thicker, and you shouldn't compress the pads. Like you shouldn't put like an R thirty in a two by four. It's not going to give you more R value. Um, part of the insulation capacity to like retain heat and prevent heat exchange and stuff is allowing oxygen to stay inside that area. So if you compress it with material, you don't get oxygen to, to, to stay in it. It's the, it's the oxygen that's, that's the insulator in, in this sense. So yeah, our Becca was right. The, our value is a formula and it's basically taking the difference in temperature between the cold side and the warm side of that insulation right and then like the vet like the level of exchange between that through the insulation right so it's it's kind of like a three-dimensional kind of formula if you will um where it's not just like it's hot you know what i mean it's like oh it's hot but it's also like not getting hotter or it's like it's hot but it's like getting hotter really quickly you know there's like a kind of multi-dimensional aspect to it so i don't know it's kind of interesting and yeah yeah it depends on like everything the thickness of it the surface area the obviously the material material you are using um i think there is that actually i just saw it out of the corner of my eye something about the parabolic like curve how like at a certain point i don't know if it's like low 20s or something when it comes to r value where it's kind of like starts kind of becoming worthless the more you add to it. Like going from R20 to R, or I should say from like R8 to R20 is a massive difference. Whereas like R20 to R32 is not like a, barely a difference at all. Like SPF? Yeah, actually, yeah, that's a good analogy or comparison. Because yeah, what is it after like 50? It's kind of like yeah. all the same. <laughs> not gonna do much more. <laughs> yeah, I'm just selling you expensive bottles with the higher number on it <laughs> uh jim's talking about grow tent turn upside down i and and i think grow tents is a good example um that, that you know the silver lining inside of grow tent i think it'd be you know i i'm not the scientist behind this knowledge but i would imagine based you know i don't know maybe it depends on the grow tent and the material they're using but I would imagine that just that reflective material reflecting the, the light and the heat inside the tent would probably reduce a heat signature. You know, if you have the doors closed and, you know, your window flaps and all that closed. and They're just going to see this giant red hot beam of light coming out of the side of your uh, window with the air conditioner <laughs> dumping it all out, you know. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I, turned, I turned the corner around the house here and I, I can see uh, the, and I can't see like the tent itself, but I, I honestly, I know. I mean, the lights just fucking blaring <laughs> on the one side of the house here. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always good to like kind of be aware of that. It's like we always talk about, man, when I first started growing, we always talked about like setting up new grow rooms and like standing inside of the grow room like at night with the lights off and, looking around really like you letting your eyes adjust looking around making sure there's no like light leaks um there's not you know nothing that turns on uh that you know it's going to add some weird stressors or something like that um 
But how often are we doing that from like outside of our grow building? <laughs> I was just gonna say my well, first grow. Sorry, Tara, if you were gonna say no, something. no, I was just saying it's just definitely something I you know take notice of and try to make sure we keep the light facing this way. And I'll uh, take the dogs for a walk and definitely check it out sometimes. Well, and we, yeah. we notice other people's all the time, right? Why do they got three air conditioning units? You know, oh, I, I obviously like <laughs> I'm always pointing out that's their grow. I bet that's a grow. We're I mean, always grow. looking at houses, and there are so many grow rooms that people just like yeah. out, and you can tell. So like if you were in my backyard long enough, and you were like, oh, there's an extra dryer duct coming out, and it's not really four inches, it's like eight inches. That's a big dryer duct. What are you guys having? What are you doing? They were up all night, is all. This house is up all night. Nobody goes to sleep in this house at all, is all, is all they can tell. <laughs> well, you, like, got, you got three phase power, huh? Three, three phase power in your 20 by 20 pole bar, huh? <laughs> huh. <laughs> huh? We've got just in our basement some lights for the the bearded dragon and the baby chicks. And we've got these huge trees down there that are like fruit trees. And I'll go and I'll close the chicken door at night outside and walk back in. I'm like, I bet people think this is weed. These huge green trees that look from far away, you can't really tell. Yeah, they're nice looking citrus trees. We got we we got all the, all these shelves that are next to us that you can't see on camera that I'm pointing out to you, of course, um, are all lit up with T5 LED lights. You know what I mean? And they're right now. We're not right next to a picture. We have a door wall right here. Uh, door wall. I don't know. I think that's the Midwestern version of a sliding door. We have a sliding glass door right here next to us. So <laughs> that's what that is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it does not go off till after like ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are like so. Our house is like a spaceship most of the time. So I, I. But my first house, and this is definitely a red era. This is 2008, 2009, just after medicals going. My buddy loans me a gymnasium uh, ballast and light. You know, the big old blocks with the big dangerous ball that hangs down from it. And you got to strap the thing up with fucking uh, uh, tie straps and stuff. And they're super heavy. And you usually got to wire them up all, all janky. And, oh, boy, is that a fire hazard. So that we had one of those hanging in our attic. Fortunately, the attic had its own exhaust fan that was just like in the top but it was on a switch you know so i turned that on there's a big old loud brrr, and you could hear it from like three houses down you know and uh and and so i would every now and then have that thing turned on but at night i went outside and i'm looking at you know i had the window all sealed off with like i don't know cardboard and duct tape and shit like that but i'm looking at it and i can see light coming out through the house itself like through all like the cracks in between the shitty siding and the roofing and all that, I could see light beaming through. And I was like, oh man, this is a mess. This is the house is like not sealed properly. It was an old house, old house in like in Dearborn. And I could just see the not even through the window, just see the light coming like through the roof. It was pretty rough. <laughs> like, I always love the uh the melted snow on the roofs that's always a good snow. way to yeah, I, I sent you guys a picture of that recently <laughs> one of those uninsulated roofs you know what i mean those yeah. attics, those old attics. Sometimes, i mean even if they are insulated sometimes you just got so many lights going <clears throat> yeah, dude. Uh, I've, I've told the story before uh a few times but my favorite least favorite moment uh was coming home you know, living in a, uh, like an apartment condo type situation, growing in an apartment condo type situation and, uh, coming home <laughs> and seeing a guy from Comcast with some sort of device in his hand, walking up and down, just scanning, like trying to figure out where this disruption was coming from. I just went in and pulled the breakers immediately. Uh, but yeah, it was these, you know, just the old, like Chinese style, cheap ballasts that were, Interfering with everyone else's Wi-Fi, I guess. Oopsies. I have no upgrade. I don't know how how much weight this has today. This was kind of an old, old like HPS uh, thing. But the longer your run from your ballast to your bulb is going to generate more 
uh, not infrared signature. I think electromagnetic rate, uh, electromagnetic um, pulse. Interference. Interfer interference. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Interference. Um, and yeah, yeah. So, so that's one of the reasons that double endeds became well, not one of the reasons they became popular, but one of the reasons they were effective at reducing interference was because the ballast was right up against the bulb. And I'm guessing LED may have a different reason for reducing interference. But Well, a, a big part of it was the magnetic ballasts, I know, were an issue. And then they kind of went upgraded to the digital version, but there was also like cheaper components that weren't necessarily FCC compliant, even though they had an FCC sticker on the side of it. You know, and, um, they... They were just, yeah, they were interfering with what they should not have been. Now, if you bought like a American assembled, American made, American approved, whatever ballast, it wasn't going to do that. But they were also, oh, I don't know, five times the expense or whatever. And we all know that that's the most expensive part of getting into this game is getting into this game. <laughs> so you know, uh, listen to the radio, like in your in your car or truck, still listen to the radio. Not, not often, no. I, I, so, you know, pulling into the house, you just go static. <laughs> the drive, it just goes static. And then uh, it definitely, when I get out to the farm and I pull in, if I get close enough to the door, it'll go static. But then uh, I, I've definitely, like, pulled into businesses, it, you know, depending on, like, the situation. I've often wondered, like, dr driven by houses and stuff like that, and all of a sudden you're, the radio just... <laughs> For a minute i'm like oh there's a grow <laughs> so I mean, that's definitely a thing if you got 24 uh hps lights still rolling down in your in your basement you might be triggering some uh issues <laughs> yeah well, i yeah, i do listen to the radio. I, I, I listen to npr dude and you know i just i'm one of those people that you know listen to like the the local you know we got a local jazz. Jazz. <laughs> yeah the local dj plays jazz and stuff and they got the uh, the blues hour. I fucking love blues hour. You know, uh, wait, it's wait. Like don't I tell got me. back to Cincinnati, I turn the radio on. Actually, it's like you know, it's sometimes it's one of those things. You get to your little town or place, and you just get grooves on. You know, yeah. what I struggle with is like always having to choose what I want to listen to. So that's why I do like the radio because I do. Yeah, I'll still use iHeart Radio even, and I'll tune into a Cincinnati radio station while I'm here. Yeah, oh, dude, I love iHeartRadio. You know, iHeartRadio has all of Casey Kasem's. Yeah, I know. Yes, I love Casey Kasem. Fuck. Yeah. If I if, if, good if, days. Oh, dude, if, if give you a good if you're a young buck getting in, and, uh, and and you don't and you weren't around during Kasem Kasem days, go check out some old Casey Kasem. If you're into this, you know some. Oh yeah. Classic music, yeah. anything like that. Casey Kasem would would do the countdowns every week for fucking decades dude and he fucking played the top whatever fucking 40 or top 100 i think yeah. he just fucking rock it out dude for hours every fucking week man remember when there wasn't nationally or even regionally syndicated radio stations like you had to actually be in that within that range of that antenna to be able to listen to it and now uh like a month ago i'm driving down in florida and i turn on the radio and dave and chuck the freak come on and i'm like what, what, what? National, national satellite radio and stuff yeah like that. no it's well yeah i mean it's all it's all like fm or whatever but it's you know the internet it just yeah, you yeah. Can get it anywhere you know it's like iheart radio right it's you can just get it anywhere it. um but even the fm stations are just yeah it's kind of interesting I, I know they got syndicated out in boston boston i think first i like, could maybe close to a decade ago or something. They used to get all these Boston accents calling in and stuff. It was kind of entertaining, but yeah, I didn't, I had no idea they're a still on the air, but B <laughs> just available everywhere or whatever, at least down there. It was interesting. You know, it's funny. I, I, I like this tangent because I, I actually enjoy that, man, that part about the radio, because you know that you're getting a little bit further from home when your radio station fizzes out and you have to change mm -hmm. the station. You know what I mean? But then you kind of like hey, I, I really like music, so this is why I like this. But you, you may not give a shit if you don't like music. But if it, it, you know, it starts it starts fizzing out, and then all of a sudden you have to pick another station. Nothing comes on, you know. So you got to just go through, and you just got to find another station. It's a different DJ, it's a different personality, it's a different you know like set. You might find some music you never heard before, um, just flipping through the radio. And I, I still like the radio for that reason. And the other reason I just I just I'm terrible with 
fucking technology. And I, 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 I hate apps to play my music. So I don't uh, like music. Uh, let me let me give you the best of both worlds. Sorry. No, sorry, Tara. Go ahead. I just me getting around as much as I do. It's funny because like when you're on the highway and you do this, you get a certain different set of radio vibes. <laughs> the the side, <laughs> the back roads you get a total different side there. Like around his town and stuff, there's like one good station here. <laughs> no stations, dude. Yeah. There's you have to listen to what you want you to listen to. Right. One station and that's it. So, no. you know, it's funny that you, it's so special. What you can get. <laughs> You got to deal with what you get. That's right. Or you just shut it off. And you're just like, oh, yeah, to the road. Or you, you got the, the you get, you know, you've got like YouTube recommendations and you're, you know, you go, you can go down rabbit holes that way. Right. But it, and that might work for like the podcast type or video type scenario. Whereas, you know, uh, if we're talking radio, you, yeah, you kind of get the radio shows, but you also got music. And if we're, if we're talking music, Rad man, I'll, I'll give you the best of both worlds. This is what I do. Um, you have the the randomness of a radio station or at least a radio station dj with the with also keeping the likeness of the genre of that radio station but also having the control over which you would not a radio other than by changing the channel or turning up and down the volume right you can be the radio DJ by using something like, and I'm sure there's other apps, but I use YouTube Music because I, you know, it's just YouTube or on YouTube, right? And I, so I have YouTube Music, and if I just am in the mood to hear a certain even genre of music, I'll go to a song that I like and I'll click on the little three dots or whatever and click Start Radio, and it starts a brand new radio station with that song playing first and then just goes with yeah. s- usually you know five out of six songs eight out of nine songs like whatever it is are brand new sometimes they're playing stuff you know if i click next a couple times like all right here's we'll give you something off your playlist you're gonna like you know what i mean chill out hold on we'll get something new you know um but i like doing that because then i can just start adding stuff to my playlist you know and come back to it later Spotify does have that, but it tends to get repetitive is the only thing I've noticed. They do have like a DJ thing now. They have an AI DJ, but. I've had YouTube music go wild. It would like start on a genre and like event because I'd be sitting here trimming and like six hours go by. And by the time it gets through, it's like doing some weird like island techno and shit. And I like might have started with classic rock, like the doors or something. And it's like all of a sudden, like gone through so many different like routes to get to island techno somehow. Like it's just so wild. It's like, sorry. So you went like doors, a little Janice drop, maybe there's a little Hendrix or the Hendrix is like. You know, start getting into like maybe some jam band stuff, and the jam. I don't know if I've ever went six hours, six hours down that rabbit hole. To be honest with you, <laughs> oh, like music just plays. Music's always playing here. Like yeah, we listen to a lot of music, and um, we listen to Spotify mostly now. Becca's got a Spotify account, but I used to just let YouTube ride and because music videos and stuff would play. For I've had the most Spotify part. for so long; it's gotten expensive though. So, really been debating which one i don't have a spotify anymore kind of got rid of it i've got an apple phone so it's kind of i stuck with itunes and and youtube at this point i used to use a lot of pandora radio that was a big thing of mine you could use thumbprint radio pandora yeah different genres that you liked and you could play different things like that i still tune into that once in a while it it has the ads still some not paying for it. I'm not going to pay for it. I don't think I think he liked my playlist on the way home just a little bit ago at all. So. Um, <laughs> she had to stay awake. She wouldn't let me drive. So, you know, she wouldn't. It wasn't even it. that. I just wanted to listen to it. <laughs> I think I'm so like ingrained in the Google sphere with YouTube and stuff that um, I, I've just always gone down that route of like YouTube and YouTube premium, Google music, and all that. Um, that I never even jumped on board with spotify until a few years ago when joe rogan took his podcast there and you just couldn't get it on youtube anymore i'm like all right well 
I don't know. I guess I'll just quit listening to the podcast. And I did that for a long, maybe like six months. I'm like, ah, let's download Spotify. Why not? So we don't get the family members account on here or whatever. And uh, I did that for a little bit, but I still, I just don't use it. I just don't use it. I upload on Spotify, the variables podcast. That's pretty much all I use it for. I like it because you can pick any song when you pay for it. And I've, I've honestly paid for it since like high school. So over 10 years, um, you can choose any song and it'll play instantly without an ad. I like that. You can make your own playlists and now they do radio. So there's Billy strings radio and mm. play. Hey, listen, I I'm paying for YouTube premium, right? So that I'm paying for YouTube music, which used to be Google play Google. But I like, I don't know. They keep changing, getting rid of things, but yeah, it's that I still, I I'm pretty certain I'm still locked in at something like Eight ninety nine a month or something, which I think you can't even get it less for less than like fifteen wow. or twenty bucks a month now. I don't know why. Don't tell them, please. Don't tell them. Uh, <laughs> in at this point. I guess. God, I just they tell me as long as I publish one video a quarter on my YouTube channel, I'll still get you know that YouTube premium access. So, <laughs> That's nice. uh, I uh, yeah, I feel you though. There's some services worth paying for. You know what I mean, and they kind of make it. So it's worth paying for, if you know what I mean. But at the same time, like yeah. you can't get everything for free. I so <laughs> advertisements like that, it just they just bug me, and they play on everything. Yeah. I get it. Um, yeah. I watch so much YouTube. I originally got Spotify so I could listen to podcasts. I think like the real dirt with Chip Baker and like Shaping Fire and a few of those, like they were on the same platform. I don't think I could get the real dirt on YouTube or something like that. And I, I didn't <clears throat> like iTunes music was just like, I'd use it, but it would also like, I didn't like it for a bunch of different reasons. Like it, it never was, I could never like the library side of it was just always much different than what I liked. But I, yeah, I would mostly use Spotify for podcasts and YouTube for all my music for a long time. And then Becca uses YouTube for music. So I started using that. But. Raise your hand if you used Napster back in the day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had lots of thousands of songs on Napster. <laughs> I did a lot of YouTube to MP3. That was like that. Yeah, one. I remember that. I remember that. Actually, I did that a lot of that with. Uh, actually, this might have been like YouTube download or a lot of Medi Cropper videos. I have like a, a solid library of Medi Cropper videos. I haven't. I haven't heard anybody say Medi Cropper in a while. Mm. Shout, uh, uh, raise your hand if you got an email from uh, if you got a cease and desist from uh, God, who was it? Lady it was Gaga? No, it, Lady Gaga. <laughs> no, it was like it was like, it. Uh, God, it's worth more than what you're doing. I, I can't remember Metallica, no, it wasn't Metallica. Metallica. <laughs> I was not on fucking Napster. I was, like, I mean, I was smart enough to do that. God, who was it? It was like Christina Aguilera or like it was one of those pop artists, like no oh, pink or something like that. I don't know, but Daddy I, I like I I didn't have an email. I used like his email or something like that. <laughs> and I ended up getting a cease and desist of his email. Yeah, I was using Pirate Bay, Jay Patrick. Uh I put, put it on there. I was using Pirate Bay. At the time. Yeah, I was playing some music, and what it was was I didn't download all of that music on my protected thing. I downloaded it at a unprotected uh, thing, and well, <laughs> yeah, don't always use protection apps on somebody else's internet. That's all I gotta say. Probably okay now. Yeah, I don't even I don't even mess with that stuff now. I just I tune music, but a lot of it because um, I own a DJ business. I just buy my music anyways because you write off and all that stuff well and and you could you you probably want to have it downloaded right can you imagine trying to stream right. a wedding and then all of a sudden you're not a lot you know no. you don't have streaming access like <laughs> what do i buy i i make sure it's downloaded on mp3 or start playing it off of youtube and it's just got ads and stuff you're like oh hold on, sorry uh oh, dude. <clears throat> every now and then like depending on the party or the wedding like and who it is and what time of night it is we'll like filter through i've i've played youtube songs definitely like on a late night thing and we'll like check it out make sure that we're past the thing and all right, let it ride, you know, and, you know, just fade it out and play it for like 30 seconds or whatever, and then fade it mm -hmm. out. 
please a request. You know, the person's request says 16 times. Hold back. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up an entire notebook page. <laughs> Everybody kills the dance floor. Fucking, all right. See, I played it. All right. That's what it did. Jesus. Well, yeah, that's. Uh, Somebody asked if you would DJ a 16 year old birthday party, and I had to laugh because I don't yeah. think 16 year olds even listen to. Well, they were saying happy. <laughs> 40th. They, they were also saying happy 40th birthday. Or well, I was turning 39. They're saying happy 39th birthday. You're almost 40 or something like that. Do you want to DJ a 16 year old's birthday party? And I couldn't tell if they were being like crudely like funny. <laughs> Yes. Or if they're being serious. And I didn't want to ask because it was like a, a weird, crudely question, you know? <laughs> but I I didn't, I was like, so I didn't answer, you know? I was just like, whatever. And then a couple days later, my buddy messaged me about it. And I was like, okay, I'm not serious. It wasn't a, a crude joke, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, and so like, um, and, and so I, I was like, ah, I, no. It was actually on a day that we have an event and stuff. So I couldn't anyway. But thankfully, because I'm I'm the type of person that like I love saying yes to like. Wait, was this like a sweet sixteen or was yeah, it like sweet, a uh... sweet sixteen? A sweet sixteen. Oh my Atlanta! <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I just don't know that genre of music. It's like so a friend of a friend too, like not. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I. It, it's... Here's the thing. Let me fill you in because I think I've got a, a good enough idea. Um, they have this fandangled app called TikTok. And on TikTok, they get uh, quite a bit of engagement with about three to seven seconds of a lot of music. And it might be the most popular top 40 songs of today. And it might be the most popular top 40 songs of Daddy Red's Day. They're going to they're gonna know three to seven seconds of it, but they're going to have no freaking clue who the artist is. They're not going to have the slightest idea what the name of the song is. And they're certainly not going to have an idea of what generation the music came from. They're just going to think it's all theirs. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's no. all I got to say. It, it would be the easiest job because all I would have to do is download TikTok music. Oh. <laughs> just a reel of just like a pile of shit. I was like, I have no I'll idea. Like, I'm like, like, this is going to be 13 like, no. second dances XM, over and over again. I think XM Radio already has like a TikTok. Station. Oh, there you go. Yeah, just put, turn that on. Honestly, I, I've honestly never been, I, I myself have never been very obsessive about an app or anything before. But man, this fucking TikTok got me bad. <laughs> Oh, so uh, many rabbit holes you can go down. I mean, my day is just all kinds of different shit. <laughs> and, and no offense to anybody with you know 16 year olds, of course, but I, I don't think I want to DJ my own 16 year old daughter. <laughs> 16, 16 party for, for a whole variety of reasons. You know, cool <laughs> I want to. I want to have headphones on. I want to be smoking a doobie. They probably, they probably want to hear that sexy red and let that coochie breathe. <laughs> really I see, like I'm, I'm out. I don't even know what she just said. The name of the song. Those words. But that's all you hear in the song is "Let that coochie braid." <laughs> Are you saying breathe or <laughs> the late late late? let the coochie breathe? But, it is the late but they don't. Really? We're past eleven, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what is our plan tonight? Are we uh, doing dreadlocks? We can't end on that. I know that I don't much. Think we had a plan. <laughs> Let's go until we tap out on being out of breath, I guess. <laughs> I think uh, I never do I think oh, I downloaded time, three minutes ago. TikTok hashtag. once and I never really got into it, but Instagram reels I feel like are pretty similar. I've right? never downloaded the spy app. Yeah, so I'm that portion of it being the spy app. I, I don't like that part of it, but like I get all my shit. I can't put anything on TikTok. I got to be really selective what I put on. They don't let anything pass by. So it's like really hard to get like any kind of cannabis content on there. You got to be special, I think, to get on there to get that stuff to go through. I don't even know at this point. I mean, I'll do like a picture, picture, picture of something just fine. And then I'll slide in a little bud and they're like, ah, you're done. <laughs> so Damn. they're not as be friendly as I would like. Yeah, I've. I mean, I, I showed that drone earlier. I've heard the same thing about the uh, DJI. You know, what I mean, it's a, technically it's a Chinese company, and that's some pretty advanced technology. Um, 
I'm sure there's a lot of different ways they could utilize that. You know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know how much information they're getting from me flying in and around and sometimes in two trees, but you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I could see, I could, especially if you're like having government organizations utilize them, you know, uh, it makes it pretty easy. They don't have to send balloons that are 20, 40, 50, 60,000 feet up in the air. They can just, you do the map. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I know like DNR even utilizes drones to check for like erosion and stuff along our, um, you know, great lakes, shorelines and stuff so i you know, i'm not sure what drones they're using but i do know for a fact that uh everyone from our uh local law enforcement to federal whatever forces use them um for their own law enforcement purposes but they they do some like uh like resetting of some hard drives some some erasing of some firmware type you know where, where they like kind of I don't know if they're installing their own like hardwares into them or, or uh, rather uh, hard drives into them or what, but I know they're utilizing the technology. I just don't know how they're getting around these rules that they've set in place for everyone else. Stronger and more dense hardware or firmware, which is, which is a higher. Say that again. Which is, which is higher has a higher density. Is it hardware or firmware? They both sound a little strong. Hardware is definitely a higher density because it's physical. Firmware is more of a software type situation. Wow. So it's actually software. It's it's called firmware, but it's a part it's part of software. And what happens when firmware gets soft, it becomes vulnerable. And you don't want vulnerable firmware because it's not really firm anymore. You need new firmware. So they make updates and then they install new firmware updates. And these firmware updates are usually something like version. 0.4096.032c-7 <laughs> no longer firm i hope that's helpful information <laughs> thank you try thank you <laughs> i just i just want to know which one was harder hardware or firmware they both firm <laughs> Hard, hard salt firm. I don't know. I get it. I mean, you're picking up where the puns left off, but uh, nut tree down there. He just came in hot early and then just, yeah, not there was no, it was just up and down and then nothing for <laughs> I really wanted the, the puns to persist. Nothing like a persistent pun, right? Come on, Troy. <laughs> Blue Ghost says, for God's sakes, don't let your firmware get soft. Oh, so. Because then it's vulnerable. <laughs> there you go. See, we're learning. <laughs> I'm really not great with computers. I don't understand how they work or why or why. They work, so you? I can't believe that. I can use a computer, but I don't get why, how, and why it works. Okay. You still use the floppy disk anymore? <laughs> the black dark web. Dude, I'm still using a floppy disk. <laughs> Floppy. See, you, you should get on that firmware. Like the floppy ears, <laughs> like the floppy ears of the Easter Bunny ears. I'm I'm still using a hard disk, dude. Oh, yeah, you just said floppy disk. Yeah, but what's <laughs> funny is the floppy disk was hard and the hard disk was floppy. <laughs> it's all hardware. What, what what wasn't it the the? For some reason, they'd call the 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 black five inch big fuckers hard disks. Well, yeah, there's hard drives. No, the hard disk. Well, yeah, it's a HDD. It was a it it's was a hard disk. It's a hard disk drive. The big floppy, the big black floppies, the big ass black ones. What, you know what where, I'm talking about? Where are you using one of those? Well, <laughs> today, but I'm just being like I'm still on that time. You know what I mean? Like uh -oh. it's. You're old. This is pre-floppy. To be honest, I still have a floppy. <laughs> I still have that that. SNES mini game recorder. So if anybody has any any SNES games, can I borrow it? I can record it onto a floppy disk, nice. and I can send it back to you. <laughs> How many floppy disks do you need? It's like four point three megabytes, three point five. I don't know, somewhere out there. <laughs> you can get some games onto one. So you got to have a sixteen. It's got to be a sixteen, sixteen megabyte. I forgot cap. Or smaller. They made, they made 32, megabits, Thirty-two megabits won't won't fit on them. Yeah. 
Yeah, you couldn't get a 32 on on one of those. They had to be. I was able to get Mario was missing. I was able to get a couple games onto it on a floppy, but we're doing some great fun to cool. good time of the night for that. <coughs> we blew through that. It was good. <laughs> blew right through it. Really good. Coming to the end of our chem cookies now. We've got like nice. Uh, two dads left. We're down to it. So uh getting ready to uh bring this tent down behind us uh next week. Well, yeah, next week I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna strip it tonight and then uh start uh backing off its feedings and get it to uh get it to for Goldie. Gonna be exciting. I'm excited. That's exciting. I'm pretty stoked. Yeah, I'm pretty I know, but you know, it, it's a bummer. So I have, we haven't, I guess we haven't really talked about it. So um, we had some problems with too much, you know, heat and lights and combination of a couple things. We think at this point that's all I can come up with, and so the tent pretty much seated out. Um, I I don't think all of it is seated out, but a good portion of it um, is pretty seated. Uh, so I, uh, texted for goalie and I was like, what do you think we should do? Should I scrap it? This was like almost, almost three weeks ago. And, um, his advice to me was go ahead and finish growing it and let's give it to him and he's going to give it a go. So we'll see what we get. So is the concern that blasting it is going to take anything out of the seeds or cause flavor to change or anything like that? Or is that not really a concern? I don't, I would not think that it would, honestly. And I, I don't know, but that's just, I wouldn't think that that would change it. I that just, has been a concern for people. Um, I have done this in the past. I haven't noticed it on the other end. That being said, from a scientific standpoint, those seed oils are fat soluble. And we're not working in that type of environment. We're operating in such a low environment that those fats and so those fats will stay solid and stay behind. So, in the case that something comes along, I can't say that nothing would, but um, a majority of it would should be left behind in terms of the seed content. That's why when when extracting a lot of those oils, it's best to press them. I believe. And extract. Them yeah. Out. Oh yeah, yeah. They're doing the press. Yeah. yeah. Like. So know, I yeah. mean, obviously, I haven't like gotten all up in there I, I, i'll have a better idea tonight on how much is seeded how far i mean a few colas that i have found are seeded all the way up um but at this point it's worth the risk to me because i was either going to throw it out or give it to pergoli so i mean if if i wasn't going to run it for you that is i don't think it's as bad as you as we think it is. I'm overreacting. I don't think you're overreacting. I think you are too. And I, honestly, like, even if you weren't giving it, you know, sending it my way, I would have, uh, you know, you could just sieve it, right? Do that that oh, non extractive yeah. method called sieving. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, could definitely, definitely do that. And I'm going to keep some of it and see and go ahead and dry it and see how, you know, I want to see how seeded it is because. Some parts you can tell, and then some parts you really can't because they're so tied up in there. So it might just be a few here and there. And at this point, you know, who gives a shit about that? You know, especially us, we're smoking it. We don't care. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to give it to you, though. You could do a couple of things, I suppose. You could either give it to a washer. Um, I, I imagine that, the, like he said, sieving it. So, like, you could wash it, right? And same same scenario that'd be sieving it so you could wash it or, or you could even try your hand at it and uh get yourself uh a, a, just a couple bags offline you know in a five gallon bucket i was thinking just to clarify i was thinking um like dry sifting yeah more more dry sifting mm -hmm. just like drying it curing it because yeah. those seeds will pop out so easily at that point and then you know they're not going to go through that screen though that's just be a easy way to collect hash at home if you have a run that you're not satisfied yeah, with yeah, absolutely. that maybe doesn't include bugs or builders so, that are going to go through that screen you we know were gonna, we were going to give this whole, this whole tent to dan to wash regardless um but this tent once i got down looking at it we have like two of this two of that two of this two of that one of this it's a very mixed matched tent right now 
So it wasn't anything that um, I like to give Dan a certain amount um, to work with. Otherwise, I don't feel like it's worth his time and I don't want to waste his time. I don't want to waste Fergoli's time either. So, you know, I'd rather give him something that's worth his time and he's not going to be wasting it. And I, you know, I didn't have enough. So I know my Ken cookies will get, you know, produce and give us back return, but I didn't have enough Ken cookies in here. You know, and like I said, everything's like, I think we've got like, what, three chems maybe this go and like two cherry palomas and two motherfucking jones and two storm shadows. So everything's a little bit all over the place because I just really hadn't planned on this tent being, I planned on it more being a flower tent more than anything. So um, getting anything out of it right now is a positive to me. Because um, if I can't get a bunch of flour out of it, that's fine. If we get uh, dabs out of it, that's a bonus for us. So, um, yeah, I'm super excited to see uh, what comes out of this. I mean, compared to chucking it, you know, a couple weeks early, oh, and yeah, just starting fresh, which, way, so. you know, we just talked about an hour ago about how often we'll reset a room but not actually reset it. You know what I mean? In a couple weeks might go by and all of a sudden we were getting behind a bed and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, you might have ended up in that scenario anyway, whereas you could have just, you know, maybe potentially got another 50% of the weight on the back end there and just finished out the run and then sent it to a processor, process yourself, just smoke some of it, whatever you wanted to do, versus throwing it out and just starting fresh. Like, there's certain scenarios where that's worth it. I don't think a seated run is a scenario in which you need to, you know, panic and cut and chop early or. You know, well, as far early. as I was, yeah, it, it makes sense to go ahead and finish it. So I'm glad I did ask you because I looked at him and I was like, let's start chopping. <laughs> so, <laughs> it sucks, but it's not that bad. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's and, and, you know, before I looked at it, it isn't that bad. I was just so fucking pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bummer. I, I just did <laughs> not see past because I kept thinking, what the fuck is wrong? What the hell? You know, and trying to figure out sometimes. If you don't have the proper things in place, that kind of stuff, measurement wise, you know, false meter, if you don't have all that data, you know, it's still kind of a guessing game and you're like, fuck, what is it this time? You know, so there's definitely some 10 degree swings. That yeah, it, for... there was definitely some temperature swings and um, that'll be fixed for the next. Season. Well, I, I, I was just going to say, I think that makes everyone on this panel and the last probably two, three or so years has gone through this issue, I think. And I don't want to speak for you, Red and Becca, but obviously Tara spoke for herself. I, um, you know, dealt with that Mr. Clean that was, what you know, would finish early, but also would hurt me like early if I didn't, you know, treat it like a delicate princess. And, you know, I was dealing with some just seeds here and there, nothing crazy, but like enough to really just drive me crazy and enough to no longer propagate the plant, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I think, Red, right, you had some issues with some seeding or something like a year or so ago. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's persisted yeah. any further or anything, but... Every now and then we'll get through a run and we'll find a seed. Like, that's always a weird one to me. Like, I just don't know if there's, like... A <laughs> Where'd you come from? <laughs> like, it's so random. I found a random lemon dozy -do seed, and, like, it's the only seed I found in the entire run. I don't think Becca's pointed out any seeds. Randomly, I'm sure that if that's the case, there's probably been a few. You know what I mean? We haven't seen them. Um, Gosh, I, know. I got one seed once out of a bag from you guys. I'm like, I'm saving this one. You know? That's what everybody tells us, and that's the, I'm happy for that. I'd rather have that yes. remark than, you know, the, the defamination on the internet. You know, yeah, I, Lucas has got a seed from me. I don't, I don't even remember. Maybe she could say it, but it's probably like Mr. Clean yeah. and Garlic Punch or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, if someone like handed me like a bag of seeds, I'd probably like give him weed for the seeds. You know, it mean? was like, it was like, hey, dude, I got all these seeds. Out of now, if it was like some shit, and I knew it was going to just hand me a bag of seeds. I was like, no, that's your bag of seeds. I'm not getting much. Weed. But no, no, honestly, man, like if somebody had a bunch of, if if like it was like ding 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 ding, ding there was no weed there. You know, no, that's, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's, you're that. gonna know that before you even put it in a bag for them. Yeah, I, I'd hope someone would just talk to me about it rather than just, like, you know, going crazy on the internet about it. But, you know, otherwise. Uh, so, anyway, I really like flour. You know what I mean? And we all like flour. 
Fibrilli has a great method of processing that, like, you know, doesn't involve... Well, okay, so he does definitely filter, right? He has a filter, but he's able to, like, extract through the material, and thankfully, like, I guess seeded bud might not even be an issue with that type of thing. Um, what What is it? Is, is Does it add a color to it? Is there anything? Have you gone through? Uh, I mean... I, I haven't technically done research on it in my, you know, ex experience like, of it. I mean, it sounds like, like, it, like what I'm thinking seeds just have a shell. I don't know if the solvent would necessarily penetrate, even penetrate and get inside. I mean, maybe it can. I don't know the science behind how strong the seeds. I mean, they'll they'll saturate with water. Um, I really don't I think. Know. I think heat pressing a seed would be the biggest issue. I think you probably don't want to dab that. You know what I mean? But I think I think that would be the biggest issue also because typically you have you know pressing seed seed oil is typically pressed out of this the raw seeds in all industry. I'd imagine it's the same in the cannabis industry. To get I don't know. Yeah, there's cold pressing and whatnot too, but yeah, it's pressed. You know, pressed. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and so like like I think like you know if you, you had a bunch of seeds in your bud. What I would do with it is I would probably just use it as my personal smoke anyways. You know yeah. what I mean? And just, you know, I, 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 I'm, I don't know how many seeds I pulled out of my weed in, back in the day. And thousands. Of, I got a baggie that's like filled. It's like a nostalgic baggie. <laughs> Either was, way, we're smoking this the weed. <laughs> I got a little tackle box. I just filled up a bag of fucking seeds. And I was like, I'm going to take this back to my guy. You know what I mean? And I never took it back. I just fucking fucked off whatever. And uh, I just have all the seats, you know. Okay, I mean? this. Oh, sorry, am I interrupting? No, not at all, dude. But I do have some nostalgic seats from the early two thousands. A stash bag. Yeah, I, we got to go through those one day, especially here live. Um, but you guys are uh, taking me back. I don't. I don't think I share this. Maybe I shared it as like a story. Well, I know I shared it as a story on Instagram. I don't know if I shared it as a. Uh, whatever on here <clears throat> check this out this is my first online oh wow um my, my first online uh grow journal 10 years ago <laughs> and talking about bag seeds um so i've told this story quite a few times and now i found this so we can actually tell it as it was <laughs> oh, yeah. without really any question it seems uh, so the strain was white lotus. Got those bag seeds. I'm not even going to tell the story because we'll get to it as we go. Pen size. This is so. This is how we did our grow journals. This was like the requirement in microgrowery ten years ago, before we really knew what pHing your nutrients was. Um, so week five details the picks inside. White lotus is the bag seed strain. I got a two by four by five ten off of Amazon. Pretty sure with a 600 watt. HPS uh, cool tube. It had a you know came with both bulbs. This is one of those Chinese ballasts that was definitely giving off uh, some interference for sure. Ventilation ran the six inch cool tube through some six inch ducting with a 450 CFM uh, uh, exhaust fan and a six inch 250 CFM. Um, what is that from? In? Oh, oh, a fan going in. So I had another fan going in because I, I guess I just was trying not to collapse the tent. Uh, so 250 CFM fan feeding the tent um, while the lights were on. That was probably also a humidity helper. Uh, one canopy fan and one mini fan. Uh, recent environments were 55 degrees to 77 degrees Fahrenheit with a 22% to 46% humidity. Look at that. Medium was Fox Farms. Um, happy frog as seedlings, and then 75% fox farms ocean forest with 25% perlite added once transplanted into three gallon pots. Two were still in milk jugs due to space. <laughs> water, so this is great. I was paranoid about you know tap water, fluoride, chloramine, whatever, all that good stuff. Um, so I was buying distilled water from the grocery store, like by the gallon. And, you know, we're talking a two by four by five tent. So this is like, you know, I'm not using a whole lot of water, but I can't imagine doing that, like buying water nowadays. Uh, apparently, we I was pHing at this point. It says I pHed it to 6.0 to 6.5. Uh, fed once a week with newts and then once per week without. So just straight water. 
So the Fox Farms Trio, once a week, up some salts once so far. Started with seven seeds from bag, all seven sprouted, called three after a few weeks. Got 19 more seeds in my next bag. Yikes. All 19 sprouted. Yay. Called all but six. Veg the first set for seven weeks. The second set for about four weeks. Side note, I wish I would have vegged longer now that I've gone through this once, but I was overly concerned with my grow height slash heat issues pushing 75 watts per square foot of HPS in the tent, but it's all good. That is a lot. Uh, I think we've talked in the past, like in a commercial environment, that's probably okay, but like that's kind of a lot for that small of a space for my first-ish grow. The only veg training involved was one main LST low stress training pole on the first four plants. However, I've been playing with more LST and other methods in the last week to get better light penetration. Flowered all of them together. Two of the original four were male. I called one that was stunted like crazy from early heat stress issues. Who knows if that's what it actually was. <laughs> all six of the second round were female. After sexing, I continued on with seven somewhat healthy sort of small female plants. They're now entering their fifth week of flower. Before I get to these pictures, um, constructive criticism is always welcome. I've had some issues, but mostly dealing with getting my temps down 75 watts per square foot and that tent size is just too much unless you have constant AC while the light is on. I didn't really have any environmental controls for this other than the fans. I should have gone 400 watts, but hopefully it pays off in the end and yield. I think it did. The smell super delicious, very citrusy, and are sticky. I can't wait to harvest and cure, but I have, still have plenty of research to go on that. Got a magnifying glass on the way to check trikes. I don't know if I was actually ever checking trikes with a magnifying glass. I don't know how well that would work. Um, if all goes well, I plan to add another tent, 4x4x7, four by four by or maybe 5x5x7 five by five by to use for flowering so I can have a perpetual grow. I already have real genetics waiting for me. Thank you, Amsterdam's, whatever those seed companies were, uh, probably Attitude. Just need to make sure timing is right, and I need another $600 for the second setup. Happy growing. So let's check out these pictures. That was my favorite part at the, at the end. That was my, that paragraph was my favorite part. I loved it. So this is week five. Nice and tricky, but definitely fluffy. <laughs> uh, that must be low stress training here. I see the string. Oh. I see, see your tie down string. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. First grow bag seeds. 10 years ago. Hey, one of the ones we've got right now, you could have been the culprit too. Our, our snow cone, uh, sugar cone was a bag seed. Um, that could have been the culprit. I mean, so is motherfucking Jones basically. Yeah. Is a bag seed. So there's two culprits right there that given the right scenario, it just might have happened. So those are my two guesses of where it might be. But we'd also just, this is our second run of the Cowboy Yeti. So, but everything else we'd ran a couple times. Now the pink death bubba, I was a little kind of iffy on too. So, but that already got kicked out. So we're done with that one. So we'll see next go uh, how things are, but um, definitely getting, uh, things are getting beefed up and checked and double checked and triple checked and quadruple checked. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to spot those, you know, if it was nanners or something like that. You know, I was really good about checking all that stuff. It was a few nights that I was like, I looked at him and I was like, it's really hot in there. It's really hot in there. I think we need to do something. And then nothing got done. So just one of those things, you know, it's both of us, you know, our responsibility and drop the ball. And now we just got to. The, the, I mean, the best part, I know you're probably getting to it right now, but the best part of, you know growing is when there is a bad situation no matter how bad it is it's always a learning experience and it's always going to make you better as long as you learn from it and like you know just just like what you guys are doing with the crop and sticking out another two weeks i think that is huge you know um it's worth it at this point we put the electricity into it at this point right. um why not finish it out yeah, it's some cost what do you get nothing for all that work you, you know, know before we were going to get nothing right and we'd already been you know pretty far you know two and a half months in or two two-ish month in, months in it was like that so at this point either way we're getting something and that's better than nothing in my eyes so take it or learn from it and next time will be even better and you know that's the thing 
this is my first big hiccup kind of thing. So I'm like mm. beating myself up big time at this point. So, you know, it's no big deal. I'm over it. And, you know, next round is going to be even better because we got motherfucking Jones galore and GG4 coming and Blueberry Muffin. So super excited to see what's coming up next, too. A blueberry muffin. Oh, it's out of sight. <laughs> oh, shout out Dink Man Dan. Woo. Yeah, hell yeah. What you got? Oh, oh look at that. There you go. The seeds. Uh, and they're even vacuum sealed. Nice. Uh, it's not really vacuum sealed. It's a little zippy. But I was going to say, did you, did you do the straw method? <laughs> no, dude. I did the it's just been sitting in a drawer method. Well, it looks like something. <laughs> no, no, I mean to, to back seal it. You know what I'm talking about? No, it's just been crushed by paperwork and shit. Oh. On the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. It's just leaky ass bag. It's been sitting there for a few years. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Literally yeah. was. So you're pressing oils over there, huh? <laughs> well, they're, they're, a lot of them are pretty preemie. Mm -hmm. But this is deep. Ooh. Still has some turps. What's the smell like, Becca? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the grass. Do you know what it, what they came from at all? Yeah, they came from a, a, a pack of weed from Detroit. Two, maybe two packs of weed from Detroit in 2009, eight, seven, yeah. eight, nine, somewhere there. Right. Have you ever grown any of them? I just tried popping some back when I got my, my growth started here. I was like, I got a few seeds in a bag. I <clears throat> tossed a couple in a pot and like a few of them sprouted, but they didn't look the best. And then I ended mm -hmm. up going to the dispensaries and getting clones anyway. So I was like, ah, fuck these things. But um, I mean, nowadays, I never even really thought about getting into them until we all just started talking about that. Every now and then I do think about getting into them, but I didn't really think where they are, but um, I found them. I was going through, like I said, I was talking bullshit earlier about filing taxes. Uh, I'd going through all my old files and like literally at the bottom of a thing of where I've been stashing bills and receipts and all the shit was the smelly proof bag. And I knew it was in the smelly proof bag. I was like, oh, I, there that is. I thought it was up in a closet somewhere, you know what I mean? But I just, I glanced it so I knew where it was. So I just went and grabbed it. Otherwise, I probably would have forgotten where the fuck it was. <clears throat> But yeah, it's been stashed off in this bag for probably. They look the last honestly eight from eight different years. strains. Like, you know, usually like seeds look in one strain. I swear, like citrique seeds are really small and lemon dozies are really big, like throughout the whole plant. And these just all look different. Uh it was it was brickweed. Brickweed, I'm guessing, would have been a field of a whole yeah. lot. Every strain could have been, or every plant could have been different. Like different <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's literally, yeah, yeah. He's got the the start a field starter kit in your hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple genetics. And I'm, I'm actually just going to the bathroom thinking about grabbing these and going, yeah, man, maybe I should start it like a, a tray of them and then like find some males to like collect some pollen or, or something. Or find some females too. And yeah. It'd be crazy to find some females out of this. Um, I would be pretty positive that this would have been some old ass imported weed. I don't think I, I I can't confirm it. It could very well have been some Cali pound, but hey, just to integrate the old genetics, man, we need some of that infusion. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, we really. I'm not, I'm not saying to like. Uh, we certainly don't want to like do it to degrade anything. I, and I don't want to go in that direction, but in terms of like unlocking potentials, like you still got to do the pheno hunting F2, F2, or F2, F3, F4, F5, whatever. But, um, you know, there's there's potential in there that we might not necessarily have in all this hybridized stuff. Yeah. That like, even if it's just one key component that you know, got to, you know, do the work and narrow down, I think it'd be fun to kind of bring something like that about, you know, whether it's just like an old terpene or uh, some. I don't know. Gosh, it could be anything. I mean, how many how many thin variety leaves do you guys see nowadays <laughs> in the higher like in the a, a few every now and then, but it's usually the growers. I feel like they weren't growing for flavor so much, right? Just like <clears throat> volume of mm -hmm. product, maybe. Hash production. I don't know. I, I don't yeah, know. probably depending on where it's coming from, right? 
brown when you got it all smushed me? together. Oh yeah, it was it was it was a pack. Well, I mean, they put it in a in a. They unpacked the brick. I mean, I didn't get a five or a ten pound brick. Like the bricks aren't aren't one or two pounds. Bricks are generally a lot more than that. But they would um, get broken down and just put into you know ziploc gallon bag. I just got a couple gallon bags that would just be a bunch of smashed flat ass buds. You know, sometimes like three or four stems sticking out in all different directions. Mm -hmm. you know, have to like peel them apart and um <clears throat> there wouldn't be a lot of like fluffing that you could really do to them but they'd be loaded sometimes it'd be green a lot of times it'd be brown it would smell like ammonia um not really so much this has a decent smell the dudes i was getting these packs from though like i had gotten green weed from a few times a couple times that they were on like on the stock they were probably locally grown um and then a lot of the other stuff I'm pretty sure the network that they were doing, I, I believe they were going down to Arizona at the time and going down and getting like $300 pounds or something like that, <clears throat> three, $400 pounds, bringing them up. It was a pretty consistent ring that they had doing. It was pretty well known. It was pretty wild. Um, they're bringing up a lot of decent, decent weed too, but uh, a lot of brick. This stuff that I got was from actually that ring uh, i would go downtown um into the into the city like the west side of of detroit and get um and get brickweed those areas but it would be like a lot of that would end up being like beasters like they'd be like little popcorn nugs and stuff it wouldn't be as bad it wouldn't be as bricky uh but off but often just getting ounces you know if i was getting any more weight than that it was brick weed it, a lot of it depended on what i was picking up what the weight i was picking up and the dude i was going to he was obviously the person that you're going to but like who's doing the connecting you know sometimes it'd be the same source but like they'd go get it from different people so i'd like think that i'd be getting the same weed and we'd end up going to another dude because it was a different weight or something like that and ended up being different weed and just so it was never consistent um yeah the brickweed days that was that was interesting stuff and then i was always like the type of person that was the opposite of the of the connoisseur that was like weeds weed whatever there's no name doesn't really matter because i just it didn't really exist in in my circle i didn't really understand and then boom uh went into a dispensary and realized that the weeds way different was i was in the situation where we had brick weed and I was only given what my ex-husband gave to me. I didn't have any choice. So uh, things for me was like, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit, bitch. So, <laughs> you know, it was that honestly, no, I need to talk about that was a big deal in, in like my, you know, relationship because like he would like hold back on me just because he didn't want me to smoke too much because now looking at it he was trying to conserve this damn brick weed because it was so hard to get where we were in ohio so it kind of makes sense and i kind of feel like a dick now a little bit because he he probably was being a dick too but he also probably was trying to conserve stuff so we had something you know and here i was like this is fucking brick weed and i'm just like going through it like nothing and uh those days were Took more to go. You took know what? It's really nice that things have evolved the way they are and what we have now. Very, very thankful. I am very thankful. I remember Ann Arbor having the good weed back in the day. Like, that's where you would go to get the good weed. And that's I didn't know anybody in Ann Arbor. Was Ann Arbor. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this was, this was like, like back when I was in like high school. So early 2000s mid you know like 2010 era stuff like that like ann arbor was the place to get the hydro you know Again, yeah. you know hydro you'd go to ann arbor and then just to get like cheap packs you go to detroit and um you were paying a, a significant difference you know for the hydro i mean you're talking the difference between i'd get a, a quarter ounce to an ounce i well if I was getting a quarter ounce, sometimes it'd be 25 bucks. If I was getting an ounce, it'd be 80 bucks. Right. You know, if I was getting a quarter pound, it'd be like 250. You know what I mean? You're getting pounds for like 750, 800 bucks. And it, it's kind of, it's, it's, 
it's kind of crazy that we're there with homegrown. We're at those prices. Well, some people are are at those prices with their homegrown. They're they're definitely at those prices with the in like the regulated market. The regulated market is selling sensimilia without seeds. <laughs> not bricked up like actually fluffy weed for those prices. I mean, granted, it's like remediated and garbage in its own way, right? It's basically brick weed, but it's I guess yeah, we'll call it probably the same age. Whatever, it's it's mids either way. Either way, mids, B grade versus C grade, and and it's so uh, so. I mean, like it, in the hydro was like twenty bucks for a gram, or like not even. It would be like. It'd be like 10 bucks for a 0.3 gram. So it's like 30 bucks a gram. You know what I mean? 30 bucks, 35 a gram for hydro. Ugh. That's crazy. Those are crazy. Yeah, it, things have definitely changed. You know, I know I can remember when I really first started getting flour that was named something. Um, it was somebody I had a connection through um, from somebody that I worked with. Um, and that was the one time when I, when I, and I, it was gelato. Uh, that was like the first like named weed that I'd ever heard of. And I was just like, gelato, okay, well, this is awesome. And uh, forever it stuck with me. And I still do enjoy gelato. You know, I'm not, I don't miss it at all or anything, but uh, it's funny because, you know, that's like the first named weed I ever had in my life. Uh, up gelato. until that point, it was just weed. Gelato's you know? definitely in a lot of strains, a lot of cuts, a lot of yeah. variety uh, of gelato. Mm -hmm. of... But up until that point, you know, you know, any kind of cannabis or weed or whatever you want to call it, at that point was just weed. You know, it was you know no names there you know, where we were, I should say, or I was. I don't want to say we. He's a, his situation was different. He was more north than me, so I think he has a different perspective and was able to enjoy different things possibly than I was um, because being further south in Ohio, it was just like, mm, you just did not do that fucking shit. You snuck the fuck around. And so it's definitely um, a blessing that, you know, times have changed and we are where we are. And I, I'll still say to this day, I'm still amazed I'm, I'm buying legal weed, let alone growing it. So, Yeah. Hey, shout out to the history. I'll uh, I'll use that as a unveiling a new shirt here. <laughs> keep it a bit, you know, keep it real simple. I like just putting the year in there. Really I like nice. that. That's awesome. Very nice. Thank you. Ten years. I have a very limited availability at Hash Bash Cup, but I, I might make some more. Sweet, dude. Very cool. So that means I got to go to Hash Bash Cup to get one, huh? You're there. Yeah. Better come Friday. <laughs> That's what I meant to say earlier. This should be the hash bash episode. Um, yeah, yeah, we need to. We should probably have done start at, at the end of the episode. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. This is all hanging till the end. Before hash bash, and the hash bash is. I'm talking for my hands. You probably can't. Hash bash is the celebration. Uh, not really celebration. The the protest. The the movement, well, yeah, it's definitely the remembrance. Um, I'm not sure what year was it. 1972, sometime in the early 70s. Uh, a poet, a writer, a author, uh, John Sinclair, was arrested. He did some time and was doing time. Uh, ten to two, ten for two. Uh, was the, I believe it was two joints. Probably a couple pinners. Uh, John was probably smoking hoagies. Probably a couple big old stogies that he had. Uh, John had, uh, I believe, been sentenced for 10 years for those two joints. And as far reach as John Lennon, the Yoko Ono band, and the whole, uh, I believe, uh, you know, Michigan music scene, uh, Mitch Ryder, the Wheels, he had Stevie Wonder. And whole, I, mean, I could be wrong about the Wonder, but... Um, but definitely all of those others came out for the the first, I guess, first inaugural hash bash. I don't think it was called the hash bash at the time. Um, I'm not sure what the name of it exactly was, but it was the Free Johnson Clare Rally, uh, something along those lines, right? Uh, and so ever since, there's been a celebration on the first Saturday. There's been a... 
I keep wanting to say the word protest, but that's not it. It's it's a um, a rally. Yeah, a rally, but a a I mean a demonstration. I think demonstration. I guess would be the word. Um, there's a lot of things that actually go on. Um, we'll get into that with a second. But at the Diag of the University of Michigan, specifically Ann Arbor, like I said, Ann Arbor's where you know you can get all the good weed. And, you know, Mac when only brick, we just floating around the suburbs. Um, the Diag was where the protest, demonstration, rally, all of the speakers, all of the crowd, everybody in attendance who would be for and or some even ag against cannabis would then go uh, mostly for because the, the against would just get smoked away or become contact high and then become for cannabis anyways. So. We had all of that to our advantage, and uh, over the last, God, I don't even know how many years now, 40, 50 years, 40, almost 50 years, the Hash Bash has been, been going annually on the first Saturday, and now there's multiple events. You have the Monroe Street Fair, which happens just off of campus, uh, up, up campus just a little bit, and there's uh, a whole line of bars and things like that downtown Ann Arbor, and so now they, they have a... Uh, a a pro, the, the rally actually begins and they march on Monroe Street and they begin at Monroe Street and then they march down to the Diag. They demonstrate to the Diag and and they get there and, and they and the and at high noon, you know, everybody lights up and the speakers begin to talk and it goes for a couple of hours and then it dissipates back to Monroe Street, usually where they will have vendors in the past, up until legalization, of course. Now that we're legal, the vendors have kind of come out. Now they got the you know, the regulated market kind of coming in and again, vendors still, but it's a little bit of a different scene. Still, there's a lot of good stuff going on. There's people passing out joints. There's a lot of sharing, a lot of gifting, a lot of smoke clouds in the air, bands, music. Uh, but then a little bit even further off campus and even, you know, say across the expressway in a different part of town, still in the Ann Arbor area, you have the Hash Bash Cup. And that takes place at a couple uh, nice hotels there in the area, right off the expressway, very convenient location. And uh, they have, uh, I don't know, banquet rooms and the whole thing and, and vendors and bands. And uh, last year they had a wrestling act going on at 2 a.m. It uh, was crazy. It was <laughs> freaking crazy. You can find some YouTube of, of Hash Bash Cup last year with I the wrestling. Go ahead and jump on that um, after the show, of course. And, and I mean... It, it's a smoke fest. It's a cloud. It's a busy few few days. But the, the cup itself, what I'm discussing there at the end, is a three-day thing. The main rally, the main gathering, gathering is on, uh, is on the uh, Saturday, Saturday specifically, uh, going from Hanyan. I like, I like the word gathering, gathering more than anything. And nowadays, I mean... We, we still have lots and lots and lots of work to do, and that's why we do still gather uh, on that. But we, we are able to celebrate. We're able to celebrate for, you know, the the freedoms that we have acquired, the distance that we have made, even though we've almost restricted ourselves a little, little differently. But, you know, that's there's tons of variables and lots of, you know, depending on who you are and where you are, opinions. So what you got for growth? You said it. You said the word. <laughs> variables. <laughs> variables there. Yeah, I really enjoy going to the Diag, and this is actually, this will only be my second time to get to go. Um, up until this point, I hadn't been able to go, and so I'm super excited to be able to go again. First Saturday in April. Always the first Saturday in April. First Saturday in April. Uh, U of M Diag, put it in Google Maps. Uh, if you can't find U of M Diag, U of M Library. Uh, if you can't find that, just pick up this. Where's open them Girl Scout cookies are going to be there? Not, not U of M Library? There's a lot of libraries. Oh, okay. So I think there's an M Den across the street. Google the M Den. Don't go to the one at the mall. So there's one at the mall. So Don't go to the one at the mall. Things and to go to down there. It's. It, there's lots to do just right there. I mean, you can spend a few hours or as much time as you want right there. You don't even have to go anywhere else. So it's a really good time. A lot of information. That's another thing I think is good. 
lot of people there with information, helpful, helpful people. So the right. gathering of friends, all yeah. we gather, meet, hang out, smoke, definitely. definitely, just like Red said. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the Diag itself has some pretty cool protections. I mean, it's it's a, it's a place for, for free speech, you know. It's, it's a place that we're still allowed to have our, our basic, you know, First Amendment. And it seems to have been protected, protected there pretty well over the years. Um, it's a really nice spot, you know. A lot of people are able to come and, and, and speak and listen, you know. And, 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 and also, I mean... <clears throat> There's a lot of, by practice, like um, uh, spirituality and shit that goes on there as well. I mean, I get into yeah. some, you know different stuff, but they do other events. You know, in Theofest does stuff there, and they do the drums, and and so there's a lot of freedom speech that happens at that place, and and it's very diverse, and it's very uh, cultural, and I mean, it's a library, of course. Right? I didn't know what to expect, honestly. I had never been to anything like that before. Um, coming from where I, my, my, where the area I lived in, in life, there was nothing that took place like that anywhere close that we, I knew of. So coming, um, to Michigan and living there and, you know, taking part in that was such a blessing. And I'm so glad that we did that. It was so much fun and I learned so much and really glad to be able to take it part in that you know and that was one thing i always said it I'm, I'm one of these people if i only get to do it once that's awesome I'm, i got to do it once so if i don't get to ever do it again that's you know i'm really good with it and you know, that, it fulfilled what i wanted it, it was a really big party the year that michigan went recreational that was a really big party at hash Bash. there was a lot of people yeah, there that year I bet. um I don't know if that's the year Tommy Chong showed up, but Tommy Chong spoke one year. And, and there's a really cool – maybe we can share it one, one of these nights. Um, when I met Tommy Chong, not only did I get him to sign a piece of artwork that I, I got somewhere over here, a piece of artwork that I had made with a cannabis leaf in it, and uh, and he signed it for me. And then uh, I gave him a, a granddaddy purple in epoxy pendant. And, gave him, and he and he wore it when he did his speech on stage so there's a photo of tommy chong speaking at the last hash bash uh if you look up i don't know you could probably google tommy chong speaking at hash bash he's wearing yeah. a beret specifically because he, he's there a few times and it's specifically the picture of him in a beret and he's got on a leather jacket and then you can see his he's wearing uh badges lanyards and then a little a little vial and that little vial I handed him. So it's super cool. Tommy, Tommy wore that. That's awesome. On stage. Uh, it's a big, big part. So a little part of me was up on stage there. I've never been on stage. It'd be a great place to speak. Uh, I'm sure if I talk to the right people, I could get up there, but that's a lot of people. I'm shy. I know I'm talking to a lot of people. <laughs> but, you know, it's more like just hanging out with a few. Um, it, it's a really, you're right, Tara. It's an awesome experience. And, and you know, I do believe in the, in the power, not just the power in numbers, but the the collective consciousness and the power that that has in numbers. And when everybody's together, breathing in the same smoke and, uh, well, the same cloud of smoke, at least, yeah. uh, you know, it, there's, there's power in that, you know, and I, I do, I think it's a really cool event. If you're able to ever make it to the Midwest and make it to hash bash the first weekend in April, check it out. You know, it's really cool. Whether you you, you, know, you want to be on at an indoor event or not, you know, at least go to the Diag and check out that. Yeah. yeah if you can't make it to anything else, I totally go to the Diag 100%. At least before, at least before, legalization destroys that too right you know and 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 i, I mean it is a library but it's the place for education it, it, it's it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do um and that is educate i mean the history of the library is great and grand you know and um and i think that that's that it, as far as the cannabis community goes you know that's the cannabis community's library you know what i mean like like you have like the all the mystery libraries and you know the Cleopatra's library and all these great libraries throughout history um but that's the place where cannabis freedoms have been spoken and, and entertained and and shouting from the the rooftops for the last like 50 years 
it's a pretty cool thing, you know, and California grows great weed and, and Michigan grows great, you know, Michigan does too. Great weed yeah. and everywhere grows great weed. And it's cool to be a little part of that cannabis community. Oh, yeah. You've got the Humboldt County and we have, you know, Ann Arbor for that, for that little thing right there. So shout out to Michigan a little bit just for the Absolutely. namesake, you know, the Michigan Bros Grow Show. So a little shout out there. And I, I, I love you guys in Ohio too. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, Ohio. I know I know you're down there. Hey, yeah, we got a lot of making up to do. It's all right. It's all right. You'll catch up quick. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tommy Chong was 2016, just FYI. 2016. Okay. It was that. So that was the 45th the, annual hash bash. That was, before the recreational. that was before the recreational one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that was a big hash bash. That medical was booming. Medical it got bigger was- every year from there, dude. 2017, 2018 was massive. Yeah, 2018 was the massive one. Yeah, and and, and and you can always expect a little bit of rain, guys. It's it's Michigan, and sometimes it's 37 degrees. Usually, is like the average on hash bash day that I can, you know, that's my skin average temperature that I that I I'm definitely not pulling that out of the actual statistic. It was cold last time. I mean, it was cold and really rainy last time we were there. I uh, like ugh, really cold. Dude, generally cold and rainy. It's it's best yeah. when it's not snowing. But I've it's- been there, so I know how to dress now, and I am definitely uh, Michigan fied, and uh, I know how to dress. It'll be sunny and like warm enough yeah. to leave the house without a hoodie or anything like a t-shirt and like maybe some jeans or something. And by three p.m., you know you think that you could still be warm and you're you need you need a jacket or even by noon dude it's always better to wear layers than to wear less because you can always take it off you can't add it when you're four hours from your home so and it's yep. too hard to find clothes sweatshirts sweatpants shit like that so just dress for it bring a backpack it's michigan becca Becca disappeared. Okay, so a while ago. Oh, Becca <laughs> down. Never mind. I was, I didn't even realize she was here. I was gonna look over and say, I, uh, so I really thought she vanished. No. Okay, so um, Becca and I will not be at the hash bash this year. We'll we'll be at the cup and stuff. We got some stuff to do Saturday morning, but we will not be on the diag specifically. We just won't be able to make it. We have a we have an appointment actually at noon. So. Um, We'll reconvene, of course. Yeah. Well, probably somewhere at the cup or maybe later in Ann Arbor or something. We're okay. going to be helping out for Groly this this weekend. Uh mostly Friday. Uh I'm I'm sure we'll help them out Saturday when we're out there. Sweet. And um if and when while we're bopping around, whenever we're bopping around. And anybody else who's bopping around in Ann Arbor, shout us out on Instagram. Pop around, say hi. Let us know you're in an arbor, and if we're able to smoke a sesh, we'll smoke a sesh. Here's a pop. We, we, we won't be on the diet, but we'll be at the. It, it, okay, let me rephrase that. If you're at the cup, if you're at the cup, let me know you're at the cup, and we'll pop around and smoke a sesh. I probably won't get a chance to like meet people anywhere else besides there. Uh, Becca told me to stop talking, so I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny usually your mom's the one that tells you to stop talking <laughs> well, like he said he's married now so no but it's funny whenever his mom's around me she's like can't you tell him to be quiet i was like no <laughs> shut up tara <laughs> i love your mom those are great so that's no, uh cool well, thing about having we'll kids guys <clears throat> This oh, oh. it's 100%. Well, I don't know that big bullshit. Even the 100% juice one, they got berry, apple, fruit punch. They're all 100% juice. Gang, gang. <laughs> making me thirsty. Yeah, dude, you're making me want to go camping. Well, let's talk about food for the last uh 90 seconds here. Okay. <laughs> Food and camping. What? You know, I've been back on that uh, trail mix. Speaking of which, camping and uh, oh, wow. food. Hold on, that luau mix. pineapple in that luau mix. Pineapple, banana, oh. almonds, raisins, peanuts, cashews, uh, walnuts, maybe one of those two. I don't know. Um, and apricots. I think I got it all. 
Oh, I don't like apricot. Chocolate Easter bunny. Solid or hollow? Solid like or hollow? Too. Oh, <laughs> solid. What well, the hell is bullshit? It's like getting a bag of chips where it's like, you know, quarter full. For sure. <laughs> you just give me the Reese's one. They're just just give me the Reese's one. You know? There are so many peanut butter freaks. I'm not There's a peanut butter freak. Chocolate, chocolate and peanut butter just go well. I'm a, I'm, it does go well together, but I'm not a peanut butter chocolate. Like a I'm not a Reese's like freak. I'm not a Reese's freak. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> freak. Yeah. I had me a, a peanut butter <laughs> and a celery stick right before the show. Mm, okay. I, I, was, I was dipping in uh, some, some peanut butter today, too, oh, with some yeah. celery. <laughs> we had celery... Just with some lunch. ranch, but I wanted something sweet, so I dipped the celery in the peanut butter also. Oh, and in my son's oh, house, I always have peanut butter. Yeah. Oh, there's the post <laughs> You have raisins? You have the other half of my aunt's on <laughs> I got your aunts. They traveled all the way over here. Brought me some fucking citric. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the ants went. Shit. Oh, dude. Yeah, I took a big old glob with the celery out of the peanut butter. And Becca goes, yeah. that, that can't be a bite. And I was like, no. <laughs> Streamed it down. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at least you're not double dipping, like taking a bite off and dipping it back in there, like straight yeah. into the can. Yeah, even though it's ours, I still don't do it. I try not to oh, flip the celery stick to the other end. You yeah. see. I'm a double dipper. So I, I, threw it out today. I was dip, I was dipping. I got a green nut treat. Crack it in half. I mean, as long as you're not like, you either got clean hands or you're not getting too crazy with the other end of it. Yeah, just break it in half, flip it around, do something like that. You know what I mean? Give it a flip. I, always do I just don't want it in and around your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I always dip and flip. Dip and All right. All right. We, we got to kill this. Yeah. You guys. Have a great week. Cheers. Everybody. Keep growing.